It's a bit of an exciting day when we do the decks of, uh, of our products. And the reason why I get really excited is because essentially that's the only part of the kayak that anyone's really interested in. The, the hull can be the best hull design in the world and the best color, but very rarely seen by firstly the user and secondly by anybody else. So if you want a really flash looking boat, don't worry about what color you make the hull because it's gonna be under the water. In fact, you could even not even put gel coat on it and particularly with boats, you're going to anti-foul it anyway. So although I took a lot of care getting that hull right, um, most important part of the boat to the new user is how it looks on the deck. Now. This deck, which suits the hull that I've made up there, which is the uh, the Mega Surf kite that I'm making here, is uh, is going to be a pretty interesting blend of colours. It's black and yellow. Now, black and yellow are great colours on their own, but when you mix equal parts of black and yellow together, what are you going to end up with? Uh, yeah, brown. Essentially, you're going to end up with brown. So if I mix yellow and black together, you're going to get some sort of puce brown. It's going to be quite an unusual uh, effect. And there's not many people out there I know that have brown kayaks. So there's a way of making the finish on these boats such as, uh, you know, it's almost a signature of the mega brand from years ago. It's almost a retro style is to have a splatter of one color and then a base color over the top. Now that's actually not that easy to achieve without mixing the colors and ending up with a brown result. So for me, the way that I like to do it and the way that I was taught to do it about 15, 16 years ago was to stipple over the top of the splatter colors. And it's a pretty complicated uh, process. It has to all happen in about five or six minutes too because you got one uh, resin going off and another one being blotched over the top of it. And by blotching, I mean I'm actually physically blotching the top of the uh, the black, the yellow over the top of the black. And uh, and if I'm not careful, I can end up with a lot of brown streaks through it. Now, the majority of the colors we want are bright yellow and bright black. We don't really want that blend, but it does actually create quite an interesting effect and it effectively emulsifies together to form our finished product. So we've had the mould out and I've, given it, I've actually given it two cleans and then a dry wipe, obviously to get any residue of that uh, uh, denatured or methylated spirit, denatured alcohol off the, uh, off the surface. And then I'm applying my TR high temperature wax. Um, with this mould, I mean seriously, I have pulled so many boats out of this over the years that I know that I can get away with two waxes on this mould without any issue with release or whatever. But again, we need to put it on reasonably liberally. We don't want a cake of it. We certainly, we just want a film of the uh, release wax. Taking notice to make sure you're using the wax on the actual top of the mold as well, around the rim, because we want to make sure that that is going to release effectively. And all the little nooks and crannies, and the decks, in fact, are a lot easier to, uh, to laminate often because we don't have things um, inserts mounted in them. Now we, we do a couple of models where we mount a uh, like a, a leash mount into the deck here but this particular one um, I use a rope lanyard because it's soft on the skin if it hits you in the surf it's not going to do any damage um, and the leash mount idea is more on the newer models um, and we do do it on this one occasionally if someone requests it but you know to keep the simplicity factor is always the key um, so around the combing here, I'm making sure that I've got really good release because this is a, a very stiff part of the boat. We want to make sure we get good release around those angles as well. While I'm waiting for the wax to, uh, to set up and basically get that nice dusty finish on it and then I can do my final uh, wax off, and what I will do is I'm going to get my uh, gel coats ready. Okay, so to achieve the finish I'm after here, and I go for a black splatter finish, which is basically streaks of black stuff, like stringy and spider webby sort of emulsification all over the, the deck, and with a yellow background. And the nice thing about that is once it gets polished in, they essentially become one, and, and it really leaps out of the product. And I'll show you a bit of vision here of a boat I finished recently that is similar to what I'm gonna do here. Um, one of the great 
benefits of doing a multicolored deck in a splatter formation is should this boat ever sustain a, a bit of damage or a bit of injury, um, a chip or a, a scrape or a scratch, is he can easily, the owner can easily pick up some yellow gel coat from any boat supplier and a little bit of black and just mix it up and smear it on and then polish it out. You're not trying to color match as critically as you would a boat made of one color. I like to do it with the surf kites because I know they're going to get knocked around a little bit. We all love to have a beautiful bright red Ferrari, but as soon as you get a scratch on it and you take it to a spray painter, that, uh, that color matching is a real challenge. So I'm going to basically mix up right here uh, one cup full of black gel coat and around about one kilo or about 800 mils or 800 grams of yellow gel coat. And I'm gonna do them separately. So I'm gonna have them basically in separate pots. Uh, that raises the question, I'm going to then have to catalyze them individually. And I'm also waiting for the temperature in this room to come down to around about 20 to 22 degrees. I've got it set at 18, so I'm trying to drop it a little bit. And I'm gonna then also use a slow release catalyst. And by using a slow release catalyst, it's designed and formulated for Australian conditions here. It means that the catalyzing will take a lot longer, which gives me longer working time. So there are ways you can play around with the catalyst. I could actually under catalyze this a little bit and do the same thing. But the problem there is I'm risking not having a perfect result or a perfect chemical reaction when I most need it. And that is on the deck color of a beautiful boat. So I've got my black gel coat. Very important, it's gel coat, not flow coat. And I'm gonna just pour that into here. And I know I need around about a cup full. Around about 200 mil, milliliters. That's pretty much it. And that's as much as I need because the black is the highlight in the, uh, in the affair, in this particular boat. So we'll sit that aside. And then I'm gonna mix up Safety Yellow. And again, I'm using uh, All Nexus product, Safety Yellow. It has a, a international standard to the color and to the uh, chemical. We'll have a look at what's in here. So in here, I have two liters or two kilos of brush gel coat this into my container okay so we're done with those the important thing to do now is to get myself ready for the ensuing gel coating uh, uh, routine that I go through Always use one cloth and then I'll take another clean cloth and just do that the final wax removal. So this one's already getting full of wax. It's my general purpose one. I tend to wash them about once every couple of weeks just to make sure they're cleanish. Get as much of the wax out of them as possible because I don't want to be adding wax to an area that I've already removed it from. You haven't dribbled on it, <laughs> sweated on it. The sweat introduces a whole new uh, issue as well. Couple of little spots there. Alright, she's ready to go. Let's get gel coating, eh? Okay, before I begin, this mold is now ready to go. I'm going to use black gel coat as the first colour. So I'm going to be trickling that, splattering it, throwing it in all different directions all over this mold, but I don't want to put it in in massive sections because I need to be able to interdisperse. Let's say that's all my black streaks. I need to be able to put a yellow dob there, a yellow dob there, a yellow dob there, a yellow dob there, and all over the mold, wherever there's a gray part, I need to be able to then apply a yellow spot. And then eventually I'll get to the point where I can start to brush over the top. You do not under any circumstances want to have your black streaks, one, two, three, four, five, and you brush and go brush, 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 because what's gonna happen then is you're gonna blend 
the black and the yellow together and create a brown and a pretty hideous looking uh, like streak or flow or brush stroke through the uh, through the mold. So, so I'm always nervous before I do it, but I know that I have around about 20 minutes of very hard work ahead of me to make sure that I get this down before it catalyzes. So first thing, I have to catalyze the black first at, uh, I have 200 mil, milliliters of black gel coat in there. 200 milliliters of resin in there is going to be catalyzed at around 1.5%. Any higher, I'm going to end up with a problem because it's going to catalyze before I can get the yellow down. Then, I'm going to take the yellow gel coat and you notice I have the stick in there ready to go. And I'm going to catalyze that at 1.5%. Typically, gel coat likes to be catalyzed at around 2%. The issue with that is that if I do that, I'm gonna, by the time I finish evening it all out and making it all nice and smooth, ready for laminating, is I'm gonna end up with gluggy sections of the black, perhaps, and even some of the yellow, uh, starting to bind up and gel before I've had time to finish the job. And that's gonna create a lot of problems underneath, pinholing, air bubbles, etc. Now I have now got a room temperature of around 23 degrees, so still a touch too high for my liking, but certainly doable. I'm gonna put my mask on and I'm gonna get into it. So first up with the black gel coat, you'll notice here I have a tongue depressor or a large um, popsicle stick and I trace and, and splatter and just simply drool the, uh, the gel coat over the mould surface. As I mentioned earlier, I don't want to leave large blotches and uh, on occasion you can splatter a couple of larger sort of sections. However, what I'm trying to do here is leave plenty of space in between to ensure that I get plenty of the yellow uh, gel coat or plenty of room to stipple that yellow gel coat in place uh, to avoid you know, mixing the colors too quickly before I do a final uh, uh, smear over. So you can see here, there's often stuff all over the floor, it's on the walls, it's all over the uh, the screens that I have in place there to catch it. To, and, uh, and it is a very uh, you know haphazard process, but it does actually achieve a really nice result. It's a pretty random pattern, but I haven't filled in all the areas so I can snip all the yellow. So just to reiterate, I'm using a relatively low catalyst here at 1.5%. And the reason why I haven't gone to the recommended 2% is because I do need a little bit of extra working time. If I was just doing a yellow a yellow deck color here, I would simply catalyze at 2% and do the entire thing in one sitting. The problem is the black has already been on the surface for a good couple of minutes. It's starting to gel, generally around a 15 minute gel time. But by the time I finish this yellow here, my total of 15 minute gel time with the black is almost used up so you'll see me here delicately stippling in between um, in between the black and the gray of the mold ensuring that I'm not disturbing that finish too much or the black pattern and then ultimately once I get to that stage I find that I've then got time to uh, to begin to incorporate those two colors by using long straight brush strokes now it is very easy to uh, to initiate a bubble or a pinhole in the gel coat here. That's why you must work very fast and, and also very methodically. And by doing that, you'll end up with an absolutely superb finish where the, the black and the yellow has blended to a point where you're going to see uh, almost three-dimensional color once this is all buffed up. So I hope you're enjoying this uh, little process here. It is something that could be done with uh, brush strokes, splatters, um, blends of different colors. And, and in fact, a lot of people are using this technique now for resin art. If you uh, look around, you can see a lot of paintings made by like this. And I've done a couple of smaller um, you know, wall hangings where we've gotten some resin and, uh, and then just laid one simple layer of chop matting on the back and hung it on the wall, you know, and that, that's how easy this can be to get, you know, unique striking finishes.
So it'd be very easy to just leave it at that, but you need to now incorporate it. So that is going to require long brush strokes to avoid having any sort of bubbling or any uh, air bubbles. So now I've stippled it all. I look for any flat spots, any, any empty spots where the mold surface is coming through, and then I start to brush it out. Now this process of, uh, of brushing the gels together now is a quite a slow and a purposeful one. I'm going to speed it up here in a moment, but you can see me applying a very light touch here, and I'm now amalgamating the two gel coats together without hopefully disturbing the, uh, the black and the yellow sections underneath. All I'm trying to do here is just incorporate it so that I end up with a very low leveled and flat surface to be able to then laminate my clots into. Now I did use a new brush for this particular boat. And the reason why I used a new brush is, is because I'm, I can guarantee there's no other color going to blend in there. But uh, using new brushes has its downsides. Occasionally you do get one of the horse hairs will actually fall out of the, uh, the brush and it's important that that's removed at the time or it's going to solidify in the, uh, in the finish and could easily be visible from the outside. So I'm pretty meticulous. I'm always looking for a, a, brush, a stray brush hair and you'll see me here picking it out of the, out of the mold and then uh, incorporating those gel coats over the top of where I'm finding those small uh, remnants of the brush itself. But the key to a good finish is, is very purposeful, slow movement of the brush and making sure that it's all nice and level and then ultimately your gel uh, is going to settle and then you're able to laminate without any uh, excesses. Now, it would be very tempting to keep playing with that <laughs> to try to get a perfect finish. You're only gonna end up with a mess. That's catalyzing. You do not want to stuff around with that. Now this brush is laden with yellow gel coat and that's actually okay. I generally have a brush for each color, but today this is a brand new brush. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze out the majority of this stuff into a piece of cardboard because we don't want to have this gummed up overnight because I'm going to come back and use this again tomorrow to laminate the boat with. So over here, always have a piece of cardboard on hand. Give it a good wipe off. Get rid of most of it out of the brush and dip it in acetone and then squeeze it out. Don't just sit it in the acetone, that's not enough. It needs to be squeezed and it needs to be really sort of pummeled out of the bristles of the brush or it's going to end up with a big glug of it somewhere. And uh, you know, generally I'll leave it there. Once I've squeezed it out, I'll leave it in there. So that's pretty clean now, that brush. I'll just leave it in there to soak for a couple of hours, come back, give it a clean, and I'll give it a clean with some fresh acetone. Now, because it stinks to high hell in here, I have my air con on, I'm gonna actually turn the air con off and I'm gonna turn a fan on to blow across the top of this. I'm gonna get out of here before I gas myself. And I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you liked that episode, don't forget to give it a like. Please subscribe, share it out. And if you didn't like the episode, tell me why. Write it down, you know, you've got questions. Why didn't I spray it? Why did I brush it? Why didn't I spray it? Why are we going for disgusting black and red splatter colors? You know, at the end of the day, any question you got, fire it away, we'll do our best to answer it. And I'll see you next time on the Composite Shop.